Do you like surprises? I know I like surprises. So let's take a look at games that seemed pretty mediocre at first, but turned out to be really good. I bet it happened more than once that you watched the trailer of a game and you thought, oh my god, that's so crap, this game is going to be a total failure. Of course, it does happen that such predictions come true, but from time to time there is a game that will prove you wrong. And this is a list of games that looked really bad on the trailers and ultimately proved to be surprisingly good. Obviously, these games did not appeal to everyone, but their general reception was positive both from the critics and gamers, despite the initial predictions. Let's start with the latest Doom. Most gamers didn't give the newest game from id Software any chance. The arguments that we heard were varied, that the game looks bad, that it won't be as good as the original, and that they should take their hands off the sanctity that this franchise is. Some people even criticized Bethesda's unusual marketing decisions. First of all, there wasn't much content from single-player campaign made publicly available. Moreover, no one got a review copy ahead of the release date, and that didn't sound reassuring. Besides, the open beta of the multiplayer didn't get much love either. When I put my hands on Doom, I didn't expect much. I didn't even hope that it would meet my extremely low expectations. I was really surprised to find out that I didn't enjoy playing any FPS that much in a long time. Doom's single-player campaign is packed with action and blood. Its software flipped off every modern FPS that is much slower and crowded with pseudo-epic cutscenes. No one tries to tell you a complicated story, you won't hide behind cover and wait till your health regenerates itself. All that counts is action, aggressive playstyle, speed and reflexes. Moreover, you get a lot of freedom in exploring the map and no one will hold your hand every step of the way. You get a weapon and go kill those damn demons. That's all. Nazi scum. Since we're going back to your roots and digging up old franchises, then we can't forget about Wolfenstein New Order. I detested the trailer, I didn't see anything there that would keep me with the game for more than 2 or 3 hours. How many times did we have to suffer grand comebacks of legends that had nothing good to offer? That's what I felt regarding New Order. And boy was I wrong. Just like in case of Doom, this game is an amazing shooter that takes a lot from classic shooters. New Order was also surprisingly thought over in terms of plot. For me, that Wolfenstein game is like the inglorious bastards of the gaming world. Tarantino-like brutality is mixed with nice dialogues, very dark humor, and surprisingly characteristic protagonist. Despite looking like a typical action hero, Blazkowicz was a complex character in his own way. New Order's success brought us also quite a nice expansion entitled The Old Blood that felt even more old school and threw some Nazi cult themes into the mix. Good stuff. What sort of road it hides in the shadows, I wonder? Something of great power has left its mark on him. Peter Jackson did a good job with taking Tolkien's work to the big screen. Let's assume that Lord of the Rings was his opus magnum and that Hobbit was never really made, okay? Shadow of Mordor felt like a movie taken into the virtual world and its plot was placed before the events of the Fellowship of the Ring. So we got a completely new story that uses the motif of revenge in the world full of orcs, elves and magic. The initial previews maybe weren't that bad, but they didn't make a lot of buzz among the gamers either. I myself, as a huge fan of The Lord of the Rings, didn't feel like it's a must-have. It looked like a worse cousin of a mix of Assassin's Creed and Batman Arkham Asylum. And you could say that it's true, but at the same time, Shadow of Mordor uses these old mechanics in a really interesting way. The best that the game had to offer, however, was the nemesis system that looked like a small add-on on the trailers, but it proved to be crucial to the game. Middle-earth also proved to be really brutal, feeling more like the Lord of the Rings than the colorful Hobbit. Introducing a new character in new locations was a good way to go. The game that Monolith gave us ran straight to the top of the list of the best games placed in the Middle-earth. In light of the recent extraterrestrial incursion, 
This Council of Nations has convened to approve the activation of the XCOM project. You have been chosen to lead this initiative. There was a lot of bad blood between gamers and Firaxis before XCOM came out. People complained that it was too simplified, too colorful, too console-ish, and so on. I wasn't that happy myself because I fell in love with the classic XCOM and that seemed like the creepy uncle you never liked at family reunions. And yeah, the game was simplified, but either way it turned out to be hell of a good game. Despite the changes, the Firaxis' XCOM offered a huge number of ideas that every fan of demanding strategy games could use on the battlefield. The encounters were smaller, but they still required a lot of tactical thinking. It's one of these games that really work and everything clicks. And if you add the great expansion The Enemy Within to that, you get a game that will give you hundreds of gameplay hours. Oh, and there's also great music there. Still worth playing, even after the release of the sequel. I'm not a huge fan of David Cage's games. I don't think that they're bad, but that's not what I expect from games. Until Dawn felt like a game focused only on telling the story, so I completely ignored it after initial trailers. Although I have a sweet spot for B-class slashers, and Until Dawn felt like that kind of thing, I never really felt like wanting to play this game. That's why Until Dawn is, right next to Doom, the biggest surprise on that list, at least for me. The game employs the style of a cheap horror movie, but it does a magnificent job with all the classic motifs and cliches. And it also has its unique features, like for example, the system of decisions that you make. It all depends on us whether someone lives or dies, even though we see the consequences sometime later. This results in a huge number of endings, sometimes as different as all of the people surviving the night or everyone dying horribly. There is no clear main hero, so everyone can die and you have only yourself to blame. The most important thing though is that the game is extremely enjoyable and it can really scare you from time to time. This is definitely the best slasher I've seen in a long time and I would love the gaming industry to employ such ideas for its own purpose. So that's the list of games that proved to be really good despite the first impression that they gave. I would love to hear what games would you add to that list. I'll see you next time.